Continuing on, we'll next talk about how you can create summaries to explore your data, and we'll start by focusing on numeric data. As I mentioned in an earlier uh, video this week, the way that we summarize and explore data will often depend on the class it's in. And as a reminder, we have several different types of classes. These are some common ones. So one is character, a character string, and another is numeric, and we'll look at numeric in these slides. We also have things like factor, date, and logical. And just as a note, I think this is helpful in thinking through how all of the pieces work here. For these types of classes, factor, date, and logical, when you print that out and take a look at your data frame, what you have in those columns might actually look like a character string. It might be a nice word, something like male and female, or it might be a string that's very clearly a date from its format. But underneath R is saving those as numbers. So for a factor, it will save each factor level as an integer starting with one. For a date, it's saving it as the amount of time since a certain set date. Um, in the in the 20th century and then for logical those are saved underneath where true is saved by r as a one and false is saved by a zero we'll focus today just on exploring numeric vectors but it turns out every now and then we'll take advantage of some of those other classes being saved underneath as um as numbers to also use these types of summaries on those but right now we'll focus just on ones that are meant to be numeric vectors. And some of the functions that are really helpful for exploring that are very simple and straightforward. So things like min, which gets the minimum values in the vector, max, which gets the maximum value, uh, mean and median that take the mean and the median. These are all in base R. They're all ones that you'll probably use pretty frequently as you're exploring data that you've brought in that has numeric values in it. For all of these, the main argument is the vector that you want to use. So here I'm going to use the Beijing PM data set that we set up in an earlier video, the first video for this chapter. And I want to pull out just the value. So let's go in and let's take a look at that in R. If, um, if you aren't coming directly from the last video, you might want to open up the script that you did for that. And you could highlight everything that we did to clean that data set up and run it, and then you can check and make sure that it looks right. So we can take a look. We've got four columns at this point. And right now, we're going to be focusing mostly on this value one, which again is a numeric value. So if I want to take the, the minimum or the maximum or the mean for that, I need to pull out just that column. So one way that I can do that is again doing the name of the data frame and then a dollar sign. And then I can put through the value that I want to do. So value is the name of the column in this case. So just running this part is going to pull out, and this is, this is very long because this is kind of a long data frame, but it's pulling out as a vector just that one column. And then we can run the function, different functions like mean around that. So all of these ones we're looking at, mean, min, max, those all take a numeric vector. So you can operate them on a column, but not the whole data frame. We can see down here that that worked out fine. If we had had missing values in this particular vector, we would need to add an argument uh, to kind of address that and to say, take this out before you calculate this mean. Otherwise, we just get an NA. And as a reminder, anytime you're learning a new function, if you want to explore the different options that you have like that, you can do the name of the function and uh, with a question mark in front of it. And then the help file will open up and we'll give you some of that information. So if we come down and look at the arguments here, we can see that we have first the, um, the numeric vector that we need to put in. And then later we've got this option of NA.RN that stands for um, uh, removing the missing values. So if you have missing values marked as an NA, you can use this to still take the mean. Um, so the next thing to note for this, these do require numeric vectors, your input, and I've been using that dollar sign to pull that out. But there are other ways to do that, and you can do that in something that feels more like a pipeline. So there's a function from dplyr called pull. 
you may remember that we've done select before if we wanted to pull out a particular, like one or more of the columns. So let's look first at that. If we did select and then value, and we can look, that's still printing this out. It's the special type of data frame, um, a tibble. So you can see right here that we've got a tibble. We've only got one column, but it's still in that data frame class. And if we try to run that through mean, it's not going to work. So we could try to add on that mean here. And we're going to get an error because mean needs to take a numeric or another type of vector. It can't take a data frame. So what we can do instead is there's this pull function. And that will take out just one column. But kind of like the dollar sign operator, it's going to take it out and send it back to where it's a vector rather than trying to leave it as a one column data frame. So if we run this. You can see we've gotten that same output that we got when we did the dollar sign. It's really pulled it out, and now it's listing that whole vector. And so now if we want to do more of this kind of pipeline style, we can put mean here and pipe it straight in. And that's worked out in that case because, again, by pulling out just the one column it, using pull, it's converting it back into its original vector class. So a lot of times we'll do this with a with a single column and we just want to explore that. But maybe even more often we've got a few different numeric summaries that we want to get or maybe even a few different numeric columns in a data frame that we want to summarize. So if we do that, we can move towards a function called the summarize function. That'll let us do a few of these all kind of in one fell swoop instead of going through and doing just one to get the mean of one column and just one to get the minimum of another column and so on. The basic format for it looks like this. Our first argument that we'll put in is the data frame. This might look familiar from a lot of these other tidyverse functions that we've worked with. Then we'll put series going down of any of the summaries that we want to create. And the, the convention for that, this should look a little bit like mutate. On the left hand side, we will put what we want the name of the new column to be, or it can be an existing column name and then the equal sign, and then we'll express how that is a function of an existing column. So this will give us a data frame where we have these, these new column names there. Now the difference between mutate, with mutate, we took the columns that we had, and the output that we get still has the same number of rows. It hasn't compressed it in any way. It's just added on or changed the columns that were already there. When we do summarize, we're going to take that data frame and we're going to end up with a much smaller data frame because we're really showing the summaries. For the basic way that we use this, we'll end up with a data frame that's so compressed it's just got one row. And then we'll, later we'll look at how we can group first and get these summaries within certain groups in our data. But for right now, we'll just do that, that original type where we get down just to one row when we summarize. So again, think of mutate as something where you don't change the number of rows for your data frame. You're just adding on a column or changing a column in place. Whereas for summarize, you're going from a larger data frame to something that's much smaller where you have the summaries across lots of observations instead of continuing to have one value per observation. So we can look at this with the Beijing data frame, and we might want to get the minimum, the mean, and the maximum of the value. So we'll go back into our studio to do this. Now let it onto the script. So again, we'll start with Beijing PM, and then we can pipe in, and we can desummarize. And then within that summarize, I'll do those pairs of what I want the column name to be, and then what I want for the value. So I can do, for example, like min of PM. This will be the minimum PM value. And then I do that as a function of that value column. So if we look again at the data frame you can see this is the column i want to operate here so i use that column name right here all right the next thing that i want to have is uh we'll do mean first so mean pm equals mean of the value and then max pm equals max of the value and you can see unlike with this pull and then doing just one single summary function this is giving me the chance to do several different summary functions all at the same time so we're going to get the minimum value with min the mean with mean and the max with max so if we run that and then you take a look now you can see that we've gone from that large data frame to just one row where it's giving us each of those results for the original value column. 
You'll also note here we have this negative 999. So it turns out we thought we didn't have any missing values in this, but really we do. It turns out these were coded in a different way. A lot of times with weather data, you might get a missing value uh, coded as negative 99 or negative 999. And it definitely looks like that's the case here because we shouldn't have any of these concentrations that are negative. I'm going to leave that as is for right now. If you are working with this data for real, you would want to, to kind of address and fix that as soon as you can. But I'm going to leave it here because I think it helps us to see as we go through how we can use this exploratory data analysis to find out little quirks of the data like that. So we'll see this kind of cropping up again as we look at some of the other um, methods of summarizing and exploring this data. So just as a note, as with many of the tidyverse functions we've looked at so far, like rename and mutate, um, because our first input to summary is a data frame, we can pipe into it. So let's look right here. And I've actually done this here. But the original function, if we copy here, the first argument for it is actually dot data. So it's dot data in Beijing PM. So we could express it like this, and this will run. But we're also, because this first value is a data frame, we're able to pipe in it. So here I've got Beijing, and then we're piping straight in. And then the output that we get from this is also a data frame. So if we run that and you come down here, you can see that it's that tibble, that special type of data frame. So what that means is if we wanted to, we could pipe out from here. We could add a pipe here and move into something else. Like if for some reason we wanted to rename the columns at this point or do mutate to add something like the range. Actually, we could do that right here. So if we do mutate and then do PM range, and have that equal with the understanding that we've got some things wrong right now because we've got that negative 99 in there. We can do a max PM minus min PM. So I'm still, again, using columns that exist as of what we've created by the time we pipe in. And you can see that's added that PM range column right there.